So the path to finding a soulmate is, first of all, you have to let go of all your previous attachments. And that includes past life karmic locks. A lot of the time we find that we're married to people that we've met in this lifetime. You can't let them go. That kind of relationship uh, gets a bit what, weird. What do you suggest people, or what strategy would be best, more, most suitable to be able to let go? Because many people are here, I want to let go, but I can't. I want to be able to let go, but I can't right now. It's, I just don't feel it. Right. Um, so depending on where a person is in their psychology, evolution, what your belief system is, mm -hmm. um, there are books you can read that will help you understand it. In terms of releasing it, um, Ho'oponopono, mm -hmm. the Hawaiian prayer of release and forgiveness is a fantastic one. Mm -hmm. um, it, it might be good to work with a therapist or work with a professional, um, either EFT, theta, NLP, doesn't this quite work that way. All the time. They need to learn compassion, first yeah. of all, and once they're able to learn and maybe just to have a good uh, energy healer. Yeah, so if you can get a good energy healer, brilliant. The ultimate thing, not you know we're not designed to have energy healers energy healers just give us the no, for me i i realized that the, my best energy healer for me is god and jesus and that's where i get all my compassion and all my peace and everything and he helps me from all the work i've been doing over the time i feel yep. that i can let go easier when i do when i pray so and if you're going to be praying uh, and you're going to be using religion or spirituality of any kind you need to ask, why is this still here? Okay, so when you feel that link, what does it feel like? Does it feel like you owe them something? Does it feel like you have to protect them? Does it feel like you're gonna be vulnerable without them? You don't need to know past lives in order to do that. Mm -hmm. What you need to do is write down what it is you feel. So if it's that I can't let them go because I need to help them, yeah. okay, what I'm doing is I'm trying to be the healer, I'm trying to be the knight in shining armor, I'm trying to save them. So that's for me, that's my self-worth. Mm. So what I need to know is why is it that I need to save someone to feel good about myself? Mm. When I look at that, okay, so what, what point did I feel weak? What point did I feel powerless? And that could be when I was bullied at school. And then I pray about that. And I look at those people that bullied me and I forgive them. And when I make peace with that, um, for men, it's often about masculine strength. And for women, it's usually around trail and beauty and all sorts of different things. But when I know what the core of it is, I can pray around that and I can release it very easily. Mm -hmm. If I don't know, it's a little bit harder. So if you're trying to cut the previous cords, look at how you feel not having them in your life, mm -hmm. um, how angry or upset they made you feel, and then look at the opposite. I can't know what it is to have courage unless I've had struggle. So what was this teaching me? What's the opposite? Mm -hmm. Once I've got that and I start working with my courage, my self-worth, naturally I'll outgrow them and I'll go anyway. Yeah. Yeah. Once you've done that, that's going to really, that's going to increase your vibration. Mm -hmm. So now the next soulmate you can bring in is going to be a, a, a level up. Mm -hmm. okay. What I then do in my seminars and what I do when I'm working with people is I then do a, 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 a current life. So ignore relationships. Now, what is it about you that you're ashamed of? What if you had to answer the question, um, I'm most ashamed when I think of, or I least want people to know blah, blah, blah about me. Don't tell anyone. Okay. Yeah. But you think it is like maybe it's, you know, I feel a little bit, I tell everyone I'm confident, but actually I think I'm a little bit of a dick or whatever it is. Okay. Mm -hmm. Then you work on that. Yeah. Heal that, release that. Look at it. It's called shadow healing. There's a fantastic book um, called Dark Side of the Light Chasers, um, which is about shadow healing. Mm -hmm. It's a fantastic book. There are some great books out there. That would be the best one for healing your current go. nastiness. Mm -hmm. Once you've done that, You've now gone up a second level. So now the next soulmate you bring in isn't just a one level up, it's two or three levels up. Then after that, the next thing is know what you want. Yeah. What is your soulmate going to look like? If, you're, if the universe can do anything and you can think of the universe like Google, what do you want? Do you want? Do you want a gym and going when millionaire? You're actually able to manifest and to apply the law of attraction, I suppose. Yeah, because you need to know what they're going to look like when they turn up. So if you decide, could they be international? Do they speak a few languages? Do they have a great tan? Do they have a six pack? What kind of personality do they have? Mm -hmm. Once you've started thinking about that, just literally write it all down in as much detail as you want to do. 
Yeah. Then you need to look at how does it feel to have them in your life? Just imagine, mm -hmm. how do you want to be loved by them? And how do you want to love them back? That's very important. If they're buying you dinners and they're giving you emotional support, what do you do in return to show them you love them? How do you want to be loved and how do you want to give your love? Okay. Yeah. Once you've done this, it creates a vibrational frequency that your healing team, the angels, they can go out and find people that match that vibrational frequency. So they're not just looking good, they're treating you the way you want to be treated. And then you're going to have that connection. Once you've done that, um, then it's, it's all law of attraction. Throw it out there. You can do a, a meditation where you connect with, imagine an angel going to matchmake for you. You can send out your healing teams. You can pray um, mm -hmm. or just focus on them and just go for it, basically. They'll come into your life this like an Uber. Awesome, and this has given us a more in-depth of how to actually make this law of attraction work because uh, for some people it works, other people complain about it, but see, guys, it's much more in-depth. So we need to look at different strategies of working with ourselves and clearing certain nasty things, the way you said, in order to get to that level and vibration, vibrational level to be able to attract what we actually want and that matches our core identity. Absolutely. Yeah. So this being said about soulmates, is there mm. any other... Um, any other suggestion from your experience that you can give us to be able to um, find faster our soulmate? Okay. The speed at which you can have anything in existence is the speed at which you can allow it. It's receiving. Okay. Mm -hmm. People talk about manifesting and they talk about, um, they talk about careers. Ignore all of this, ignore energy, ignore spirituality. People say, oh, in about two years time i'll be rich or yeah, you know in about three years time plans, and sometimes they don't work on a career level or a personal mm. level they make these life plans and so many times no it's just not working exactly. it, yeah so people have this belief that mm -hmm. they will have x y and z when mm -hmm. you could think that my soulmate i want to have my soulmate when i'm living in kensington in a nice big house with a Porsche, whatever, and she'd be the kind of person that would go and do lots of yoga, and she's been the kind of person that lives there. But because I currently don't live in Kensington, I've just told myself I can't have this soulmate until I move down to Kensington, and that in my head might be three years away or it might be two years away. But she lives in Kensington, so why doesn't she meet me here and I can come and move in with her? Do you know what I mean? There's no so the once you've got an idea of what you want, the only thing you need to do now is receive it. And the speed at which you can receive it is the speed at which you can clear your blocks. And that is it. So honestly, the fastest way you can do this is to work on any negatives you've got. Write down what it will be like. Okay, question. If I move down, if I get my soulmate um, and we go out to a bar together, if she's that amazing, someone hits on her, how am I going to feel? Am I going to feel awkward? Am I going to feel like she's going to leave me? Am I going to feel that I'm just not beefcake enough? Do I need to go down the gym more? Am I going to, how am I going to feel? Mm -hmm. Because if you're too nervous to take her out, mm -hmm. you don't think you deserve her yet. Mm -hmm. um, if it's him, if he turns around and says, okay, so you know, you're a beautiful woman and you decide, right, I want this guy and he's going to take me to Monaco, he's going to take me to Cairns. Okay, and if a model walks past him and he smiles at her, how am I going to feel? So the thing you really need to work on is your confidence. And yeah. do you see yourself as the kind of person that they would love? Mm -hmm. Write down anything. Honestly, just make a list and obsess about it. What about you do you think they wouldn't like? Because if there's anything that you've got you don't think that they would like, then you're going to block them from coming to you. Mm -hmm. At the yeah. moment, you think to yourself, do you know what? I'm not perfect. Neither are they. But they're awesome. I'm awesome. And I can't wait to meet them. And you've got no resistance. Literally, you can sit at home, they'll knock on the door. Mm -hmm. I had a client, um, I, I say this to people, you can sit on the tube, you can sit at home. I had a client and he had acute agoraphobia, hadn't been out of the house in 10 years. Wow. Young guy. And uh, we were talking to him about soulmates and he wanted love and all this kind of thing. And about, I left him for about a month. I went away on holiday and I came back and he said, oh, you'll never guess what. You know how you said my soulmate will knock on the door? I went, yeah, he goes, yeah, she has. And I was like, <laughs> all right. So I meet this girl, Sarah. Sarah was beautiful. She was kind. She was compassionate. She was amazing. She was everything that you would want in a soulmate. 
um, mm. because this guy's mum had a friend. The friend had a daughter. They'd met for coffee. The daughter had come around and they're married. They've got children now. They've been together for four or five years. He was just sitting there because he didn't have any doubts about meeting a girl. He just had a doubt about leaving the house. And he always thought, you know, if I left that, I'd talk to anyone. But he was too scared to leave the house. Sounds <laughs> stupid, but it's it true. It's just about your own self-worth. And and knowing that it's your possible personal confidence is going to mm. speed up your uh, soulmate finder finding yeah, yeah. there is yeah. one big one i've noticed actually um one big one is that people that are entrepreneurs um mm. and this is a throwaway to people that are successful the more successful you get the harder you struggle mm -hmm. the harder you struggle the more you find you have to do it alone this, this is very common. You do things, people come in your life that they're going to help you, they're going to help you. They don't, or they don't help you to the way. And so you start getting this, this belief that you're alone. And then you develop a belief that there's no one out there on your level. Mm, yeah. That the really successful people that are on your level, you'll probably never meet them. Mm -hmm. Or you have to be by yourself. Mm -hmm. You have to prove to yourself. And that belief that you're alone or you have to show everyone that you're strong and that you don't need support that is a very big block to having soft yeah. yeah. so that's that's a good one for people to look at where does that come yeah, from this is for all the very highly successful entrepreneur to take on board because uh, i actually noticed this pattern onto a few of them mm -hmm. um just feeling that i have to do everything by myself because it's very hard to find someone at this level which is a huge block, as you said, and they need to clear that out. It's very specific for women as well. Yeah. Guys have it, but for you women out there, when you're trying to be successful, when you're being successful, no trying about it, it's such a male-dominated view that you start getting men that are just valuing you for your looks and like, oh, you're pretty, but they're not expecting. So you have to mm -hmm. fight that much harder. Mm -hmm. um, and you can become a little bit jaded and start believing that men don't see the real you because they're too fixated on your looks and they're mm -hmm. too fixated on your beauty. So if you're saying that men can't see me, then it will create that block in your soul partner seeing you because you have to fight to be seen. Mm -hmm. So that's something which you can do if you work on the male energy side. Yeah. Wow. Uh, we had quite a lot of information today. It was and, a bit fast. Um, uh, I hope people won't get too overwhelmed. But at the same time, I hope that this will facilitate finding their soulmates, uh, soulmates in case, I'm sure they found some yet, but there's still people out there who are looking for that special person. Absolutely. And, and um, this, all this information is very valuable to me and I'm sure for everyone else, it's very, very valuable. Um, Richard, if people want to find you, how, where can they find you? Can you give us more information about your social media, your website, your um, email address? I'm not, I'm sure you, you're not really big into social media because you're not like... I'm, I'm getting bigger. <laughs> it's, um, most of my stuff at the moment is by request, um, but I've got a few programs recently that have necessitated a few things. So um you can my email address is richard at elite success mm -hmm. um i'm just developing the website at the moment um because i'm doing something for some traders um mm -hmm. then you can go on to um, the osterfield clinic on mm -hmm. facebook uh, mm -hmm. and find me that way um or you can email me privately um, at richard osterfield at yahoo.co.uk um and in the next two or three weeks, the website and everything will be up. So it will be up and working. Yeah, I'll post that there. Okay, and um, yeah, this this was great. Uh, I'm sure people, as I said, will find it very interesting um, and very beneficial. And I hope I can have you as my guest in uh, some of the um, the next episodes that I'm going to be filming because on amazing quality part. This is a this is a, this is a big broad topic. So we can talk more about this or any other topic people might want. Um, Absolutely. Yeah, Richard. What can I say? Thank you so much for being my guest. I really Thank you. appreciate uh, for taking the time, and uh, I shall see you very soon.